Hello friends. Welcome to an exclusive episode of View from the Bridge which brings you face to face with the leaders of the maritime world. The view this time is truly remarkable. We present to leading personalities from the maritime world deliberating on some of the most crucial topics. We are delighted to invite Ms. Sanjum Sahi Gupta who has recently received the distinction of being among the top 100 women in shipping by the renowned and prestigious maritime platform all about shipping uk founder member of vista india and board member of vista international as well as a member of the executive board directors of the world maritime university malmo sweden ms sanjeev sahi gupta is an advocate for diversity in the maritime industry but most of all she is the pride of the indian maritime fraternity In this episode of View from the Bridge, she is in conversation with top Indian bureaucrat Ms. Malini V. Shankar. A warm greeting to all our viewers. I'm happy to be on Sailor Today TV. I hope everyone is safe and healthy at home or at sea. The COVID-19 pandemic has sparked a global realization that our current way of life does not work. it has broken our perception of what is normal one such critical area where the need is for change and has become evident is maritime education on this show i am delighted to welcome a most popular figure of indian maritime administration it is my pleasure to invite dr malini shankar to share her valuable thoughts insights and views on maritime education As you all know Dr Malini Shankar is a renowned bureaucrat belonging to the 1984 batch of the Indian Administrative Service former director general of shipping and she's recently been appointed as a vice chancellor of the Indian Maritime University Welcome to the show Dr Malini Shankar and congratulations on being appointed the vice chancellor of the Indian Maritime University by the honorable president of India Thank you so much Sanjam always a pleasure to be with you uh, wherever it is and i'm glad you are the one who is talking to me today it's a pleasure to be on sailors today also thank you so much so without much ado we'll get started um uh, the imo plays an important uh, role in the development of trained human resources for the maritime sector ma'am according to you what is the current state of maritime education in india and do you think there's scope for improvement and what are the areas that you feel would require your immediate attention as we all know maritime education is structured across the world shipping being an international uh, uh, sector this is not something which is left to each country alone these are governed by international conventions especially the mandatory courses under the fccw and uh, maritime education broadly divided into two one is the courses which offer degrees like bsc and btech and these are the courses which come under the purview of maritime university as an entity which offers the degree and then you have all the other courses which are modular courses which are pre c post c which are governed by the stcw and as of today they are regulated by the director general of shipping um i do think that uh, education uh is foundation for the construction of any uh, developed society and for the country itself so in that capacity building has to be a constant effort and not something which is once in years uh, indian uh, seafarers whether they are uh, you know officers or the cadets they are viewed with great respect across the world and it is our, it has to be our endeavor to ensure that this uh, You know, reputation is not only maintained but also carried forward to much greater degree. So that the idea should be that whenever anybody thinks of a seafarer, they should think of an Indian seafarer. So, um, our seafarers are facing many challenges with regard to global competition. And what do you think would be some of the strategies for upgradation of skills to to keep Indian jobs safe for our yes. seafarers? from my experience as you know over two years as director general of shipping there were constant two constant uh, sets of feedback which 
uh, which reached us and it was very constant from all quarters from the stakeholders from the market from even the outsiders and this was i do not think uh, from what from this feedback we understood that our seafarers are very well trained uh, theory is very good uh, the skill sets is fully imparted but there are two issues one is attitudes they you know there is something that you know the, the, the saying that you can take a horse to the water but you can't make the horse drink water so attitudes have to improve on the part of both faculty as well as the more importantly of the students saying that there has to be a constant learning there has to be a quest for learning i think there's a general attitude today of saying i go i get admission into a college i get a degree and i will find a job rather than that we would say how do i better myself how do i become a better seafarer today than i was yesterday after each sailing how do i become so much better that people seek me out and this attitude to learn attitude to not just observe in the workshop just go through the process so that you can get your marks and your degree but to learn and to become to, to acquire a mastery over it that's number 1 now this starts this should actually start from school and home but sailing which we have to give it uh, you know leaders in the education sector and training sector have to keep harping on it and emphasizing this at every step that's number 1 the number two feedback that was constant um is communication and we live in a very interconnected world a global world and uh, english is the lingua franca in the global world and more so in shipping so we cannot say that we are very proud of our language and we will not learn english and when i say english it's not the queen's english we are trying to learn it's not the ren and martin english it's not grammar and composition but the ability to cogently think and to cogently uh, express so clarity of thought and expression precision of uh, communicating what you have to say i think these are very important look at our competitors if it is philippines there let's uh, let's not compare skills and knowledge but their attitude and their uh, communication is par excellence similar is most of the south asian countries focus on that if you look at the western countries they their whole education system is um, focuses on the ability to communicate your knowledge so while there is a constant there is a basic knowledge imparting of knowledge imparting of skill there is something beyond that that each stakeholder and not just somebody in the education sector has and i'm sure the shipping companies and the employers are focusing on this as they go along the seafarer who catch you know who masters this will be the one who forges ahead of his competitors all right um ma'am given the period that we spent in the lockdown uh, technology has emerged as a major life saver look at us today we're sitting here virtually uh, talking uh, doing this interview with you what do you think should be the direction in which we must apply our uh, efforts uh, is this something how can we use technology to better the way of life i think the entire education sector is working on it sanjam for example you know all of a sudden everybody had to go to online classes and i think they have exceeded expectations of most people when they are able to deliver classes from their home or from their office to a myriad of students sitting across the um, country or in, across a region uh, of course it's up to the students uh, to actually pay attention there are challenges in uh, online learning as to how many hours you can sit in front of a screen or a computer and actually try to absorb what is being imparted to you but uh, i know companies and i know institutions which are coming up with uh, you know online learning today is almost perhaps in its primitive stage of one way i speak and you listen or i tell you something you send it by flat file and then i correct it and give it back i the, the they're working the next development is actually to have online education but in a more interactive way the whole i i i don't know if this continues for long i suppose that the even the teaching methodology might have to undergo a transformation as to what do you impart what do you focus on and how do you deliver this so that the student is um, not only present but attendant attentive and and absorbing and uh, you know able to analyze the whole thing this is a challenge but i personally think that there is no substitute for going to a college going to an institution 
interacting with the teachers, clearing the doubts, or having competition face to face with your classmates, or learning from your seniors, going to the library, having a game, having some recreation. I don't think uh, mankind is born on the, on this earth uh, to substitute the technology is a tool and is not the substitute for uh, face to face education. Um, thank you, ma'am. That was uh, really interesting. Um, um, so this clear disruption of our normal functioning of things has placed an emphasis on many questions. Uh, what could be the current effects of the pandemic for the future of maritime education and training? And as you mentioned right now, uh, that there can be a lot done, but there's no substitute for the physical interaction. And yes. COVID-19 may have been the analysis for change that is long pending. So the aftermath of this global health crisis, uh, there could be the new adoption of technologies and approaches in maritime India, or in education in India. And what are your views on this? How do you think we can best use it with a combination of virtual and physical interaction? There are already institutions that I have seen. Um, you know, don't just look at a one-way teaching. There, there are people who come up, come up with hybrid mode of teaching. Uh, for example, everything, you know, is uh, animated on the computer and you open it and you learn and you sit there in front of the computer, you interact and uh, there is a simulation, simulated exercises. And when you have a doubt and you want to hear something, then there is a teacher who address the doubt for you. And I think this hybrid mode of learning is uh, actually much more it's like practice like combining theory with practice just imparting theory doesn't give you uh, the skill to apply your mind when it comes to a real life situation I, I i think so in that sense technology is not just online learning sitting in different places but even when you're sitting in the classroom there is technology which has come up with uh, you know sim simulation is a fantastic example i mean you don't have to go on a ship really don't have a uh, you know, uh, and, and there are advanced simulators, for example, the 3D simulators where you wear these 3D glasses and you can actually see that you're in the sea. So these are advancements. They are expensive at the moment, but I think institutions might realize that this is better to invest in it now so that you, you will have a, not only better returns in terms of financial returns, but also better in, um, trans, uh, you know, uh, uh, transmission of knowledge. Is there any particular message that you'd like to send our audience today in this new role that you're going to take on? You embarked on so many exciting role in the course of your career. <laughs> and I know that I am one for sure. I love those stories and those little anecdotes you share with us. And you obviously have this wealth of experience that you're going to bring to this new role. I'm sure you're excited and there's going to be so much that you're going to you know, add uh, of value to this. But is there anything particular you want to tell the industry about you taking over? Is there any message or something you'd like to tell everybody in the industry? I, I, I think it's, um, it's very early days. But all I'd like to say is the university is for you. University is not a standalone entity. And if, we, if my dream is to make that university, raise the bars of standards of this university, and to seek collaborations, not just with Indian organizations, but also with some internationally reputed organizations in the maritime sector. I would like to see all your cooperation because without your inputs, I think no institution can go forward and realize it. So come join me in the dream for maritime education. Thank you, Sandeep. Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Malmi Shankar. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, your futuristic vision and insights are always encouraging, motivating, and inspiring. We wish you all the best on this new role. Thank you for having invited me, Sanjay. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye Bye. to all our viewers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe, all of you. That was really enlightening, wasn't it? A famous writer once wrote, Adjust your sails to the future when you can't change the directions of the wind. This is truer today than ever before. The good news is that there's always a way to restart. So get your engines running. See you soon on another episode of You From The Bridge. Till then, bye-bye.